to go back to school to become a paralegal. That was my step in getting a promotion to being a paralegal in this attorney's office. So I went to Long Island University for three months while still working. I used to work before the midnight shift or the 62 shift. I worked in the Early Case Assessment Bureau where all persons arrested in Brooklyn, which is Kings County, mm -hmm. had to be processed through there. So I was a data entry clerk filling in all the information related to arrest and um, typing information. Um, as a paralegal, you would work with the district attorneys and draft the complaints after interviewing the officers. So I went to paralegal school and I would work the 412 shift or the 62, get home, get some sleep and have to be back in school at eight o'clock in the morning. Mm. And that would last till about two o'clock. That tour window was not enough. Didn't have the money to go back home anyway. So I stayed there at Long Island University. There was a sofa there which I slept in or got, got into our sleep before I went back to work that afternoon. So I did that for three months. I graduated top of the class and I became a paralegal. So I did that and it's a new culture. I was trying to decide what to do. As I said, my first degree was in international relations and I wanted, I, I wanted to do a master's in, in international affairs at Columbia, MBA. I thought about all the graduate programs and I finally decided on going in, um, going to law school. Mm -hmm. um, that was law was not my first love, but things worked out the way it was <laughs> to be worked out. So that's the truth. Yeah. I I applied to the University of Florida College of Law, was accepted, and on faith I picked up and moved to Marion County, Ocala, Florida, without knowing anybody in Marion County. And I attended the University of Florida for three years, commuting from okay. from Marion County, from Ocala, up to Gainesville every day during the three years there. And I had the privilege of being awarded Central Governmental Responsibility Fellowship. And uh, that allowed me to work with public interest law, mm -hmm. law that benefits the poor and underrepresented people. And I did that while going to school at the University of Florida College of Law. And I did landlord tenant issues. I dealt with paternity suits, um, some matrimonial issues. And I was certified by the Florida Bar to do that through the University of Florida College of Law. So I've had experience with that type of stuff, dealing with the underrepresented and being exposed to that area of the law. Um, at that time, when I graduated, I was trying to get into legal services, and nobody was moving from legal services. <laughs> people within 20, 30 years, these are people who are dedicated to that type of yeah. practice of law. So I couldn't break into that, but during my three years at the University of Florida, other than the civil clinic that I did, I had a passion for trial work. And I applied to the state attorney's office here in Volusia County. Um, Steve Alexander was the state attorney at the time, and I was blessed to have found a job as an assistant state attorney. That was my first job out of law school. So I commuted for a little while between Ocala and here before I found a um, living quarters here mm -hmm. and I practiced as an assistant state attorney for 12 years. I did probably about 10 of those 12 years in the circuit court dealing with felonies, homicides, sexual batteries, um, child rape cases, mm -hmm. grand theft, all that and I've tried over 100 cases to jury verdict as a, as a prosecutor and in 2005 I applied to become a county court judge and that process, just to give the viewer or the listeners a little background, is that the time I, when I applied in December 2005, we had 36 lawyers applying for that position. It was a newly created position by the legislature, and we have what is called a judicial nominating commission, which is comprised of lay persons and lawyers mm -hmm. and community leaders. And I believe there are nine members of the judicial nominating commission. They interviewed all 36 candidates, and it's their job to call that whatever number of interviews are to six. And again, I was blessed to have made the final six, and the six finals were, names were sent to the governor. And we had some, you know, there was a very qualified list that went up. And I was fortunate and blessed that the governor selected me to be the county court judge in December of 2005. I started doing that in January 2006. That was my first official start as a county court judge. 
And the, the county court, just to give the listeners an idea, this is the people's court. Mm -hmm. We do misdemeanor, that is crimes that can be punished by up to a year in the county jail. We have worthless checks, driving while license suspended, DUIs, we have municipal ordinances, and on the civil side, we have disputes, civil disputes, up to $15,000, excluding in, um, interest and attorney's fees. Um, Subsuming that is small claims court, and a civil dispute up to 5000 mm -hmm. And the, 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 the civil side of the county court also deals with landlord, tenant issues, evictions, and civil traffic citations, which are not criminal in nature. So that's what the county court is, the people's court, and I agree, yes, it's the less serious problem that we face in society, but the people who come before us have real problems and they're looking for real solutions. And that was kind of the <laughs> comment that I was going to make because um, even when I was city clerk, I would run into people with those exact same issues um, who, uh, who have to deal with their housing issues, you know, the um, landlord tenant issues, the um, the basic types of, of, of things that you deal with, you know, even parking tickets, tickets. and the like, <laughs> yes. uh, these are things that people who have little or nothing, you know, to call their own, still have to face. Yes. And uh, you had actually had the opportunity of being a judge and dealing with those particular issues where um, you actually dealt with issues that the average person deals with, yes. you know, on a day-to-day -day basis many times. And not only that, Having your background, I could see how you would be able to relate, even. Yes, it definitely does, and um, as I said, it's people's court, but it's people's court because it's likely that a person wouldn't get, and time, not, and time is not the right word, but have contact with the judicial system is mm -hmm. probably going to be in the county right court. There, yeah. But you're right, these things may seem minor, what causes mm -hmm. a lot of sleepless nights for people. People are not used to the system and they're not sure what to expect. And you said, you know, the landlord tenant type situation, mm -hmm. that's their housing. Right, right. Um, so these are issues that need to be dealt with. And as a judge, you have to follow the law, but at the same time, you can temper justice with mercy. And my background, again, my work ethic, my background, gives me some insight into how people dealing with issues, mm -hmm. but I've dealt with these issues myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on the criminal bench, and so these people have real problems. You know, and one of the biggest problems that people who come before me have are drug issues. And it's amazing how these things affect not just the defendant, but the entire family. Oh, absolutely. So we have to find solutions within the law. One, I just tell people, you know, the, the purpose of sentencing is twofold. One is rehabilitation, the second is punishment. Mm -hmm. And obviously the first attack is to try rehabilitation. Um, and without the proper tools, I tell these young kids, it's a vicious cycle. You're gonna be in and out of jail, they're in and out of prisons, or they're gonna find you dead somewhere. And I've mm -hmm. seen instances of many young people abusing drugs, either prescription medications or illicit drugs, you know, cannabis, cocaine, or whatever, and I've seen instances where they've died. Mm -hmm. So this is real. And then you have usually the parents who are coming to court begging you for a solution. And we have some good programs here. We have the drug court, which mm -hmm. I think is a very good yes, program. I was, last night I was at Haven Recovery. You know, they changed the name to Windward, mm -hmm. but they've provided you know, a good program for recovery. And there was, I was impressed with a the gentleman there last night. He was a nine-year combat veteran, and he thought he could make it on his own, and he came back from the military, but he got addicted, and his life was spiraling downwards, and Haven saved him. Mm -hmm. And he was there, and I, from what I can gather, I spoke with him personally, and he's applying to become a Florida Highway Patrol trooper. So these are real issues, mm -hmm. and if we get them at the right stage, yeah. we can save a life, and we can keep the family together. So mm -hmm. that's what the people's court is all about. And again, as I said, Two per the twofold purposes: rehabilitation and punishment. And sometimes some people are not ready for the treatment. Mm -hmm. So, as a judge, you have to probably change the second purpose, which is punishment. So, as I said I temper justice with mercy, and based on my work ethic, my background, and my life experiences, I've learned to treat everybody with respect, with dignity, and I made tough decisions. And I know that I have to temper justice with mercy. Mm -hmm.
Uh, I am going to your website and I want you to share that site uh, before we leave. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of people from all walks of life, uh, from every uh, ethnicity, uh, racial, I'm sure religious and the like, uh, who are very, very supportive of you based on um, not just the person that they've come to know, but also the fact that you're very well qualified um, in terms of the years of experience you've had, uh, 12 years with the uh, attorney, state, state attorney's attorney. office, mm -hmm. yes. And then your your number of years on already on the bench. Eight and a half years, yes. yes. I've yes. served as citizens of Volusia for over 21 years. Absolutely. Uh, and, and this, it speaks highly of you in terms of uh, the level of support that you've gotten. And you've gotten it from, like I said, all walks of life, but all of those that uh, people deal with as they go up. Yes. <laughs> You know, uh, go into that chain of of, um, of life that you know doesn't really turn out the way that they want it. Um, unfortunately, people can't always uh, control um, what they get into. I know there are a lot of people who think that you know a criminal, a criminal, a criminal, but there are some people who find themselves in situations where uh, if they had their preference, they would not be there. Uh, sometimes they're trying to do things that would help them as well as help their families and the like. So it's good that you're able to relate to that, but the people speak uh, in terms of your background, of your integrity. Uh, they, they speak of, of your experience. They speak of your fairness uh, to others as well. Uh, and um, and, and in, in my mind, that speaks highly of you and in terms of not just the person that you are, but uh, the type of justice that you need out, you know, to others. Appreciate that. And, you know, I, in, in, in Jamaica, our motto is out of many one people. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to respect people from all races, classes, and I get along with everybody. Um, you know, people are people. Mm -hmm. And one of the frustrating things that I find with this campaign is that it's a nonpartisan campaign, but people try to inject party politics into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the question I get most frequently asked on the campaign trail is what party are you? Mm -hmm. And by the judicial rules of ethics, I'm not allowed to answer that question, but it really doesn't matter. But when a person comes before me, I don't see them as a certain party, a certain race. I see them as a person who has an issue that needs to be dealt with. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, now, how best for those who are supporters who would like to help you in your, your campaign, uh, how best for them to reach you or your campaign office and uh, if you would share your website as well. I would definitely do that. Um, the website is www.judgemaglashan, spelled M-C-G-L-A-S-H-A-N, mcglashan.com. And um, you can get whatever information you have there. There are ways to help. And um, we also have a Facebook link if you're social media savvy. <laughs> we appreciate you going on the page if you like it and share it with your friends. So I appreciate your support, and um, you have a choice to make in August 26th. And I've done the job for the last eight and a half years. I've been fair, I've been efficient, and I would hope that I've earned your vote for another six-year term. Wonderful. Uh, and that's important that they know that it is for uh, six years. Uh, and, um, you know, there are some people who, who may believe that judges really shouldn't even run have to run for office because of what you have to go through in terms of uh, elections in your life uh, but uh, it's a part of the process that you have to go through and you go through it and do you know what you have to do um, i also want to mention that uh, there are those who have spoken up for you not that you need necessarily speaking up for but those who have made the statement that you are a man of um, of great respect, uh, you're humble, uh, family man, uh, church man, uh, an individual who cares about um, not just doing things for reputation, but doing things to help yes. others. And that's where I was brought up. Um, last year, I took nine, nine days of my personal vacation time to go to the Amazon in Colombia, South America, to I went more because of my availability than my ability. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a group of people who were tradesmen, who mm -hmm. were building an addition to a church there in Tabatinga, Brazil, mm -hmm. that more youth could come in and enjoy the church and, and the facilities. So we went there in August, it was hot, 
what we did what we had to do and that's how I give back to the community. I do it here locally as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you because we do have two or three more minutes. Uh, uh, now you are currently an incumbent. You're running for re-election, and um, even though you've been in the office for eight and a half years, uh, if you can think back this far, um, <laughs> your expectations uh, before you were in office, as compared to what you found. It's, it's not. It's, it's not a big difference. I've been in the courtroom. I have been in the courtroom ever since I graduated law school. I spent 12 years as a prosecutor. I've dealt with children who have been molested by their stepfather or their father. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're called capital sex. I've dealt with babies who have been shaken, mm -hmm. and it's a shaken baby syndrome. And so I'm familiar with the courtroom. And my expectation between the two, between a practicing attorney and judge, was not that different. What not really surprised me, and I, I knew it was going to happen, but I knew, never knew it was going to happen that fast. The isolation. Mm. Um, if you're a lawyer, most of your friends are probably going to be lawyers, <laughs> but you become a judge, um, just to avoid the appearance of impropriety, sometimes you can't do the things that you could do as a practicing attorney. Mm -hmm. And the decision making as a judge, you're the one who makes that decision. In the state attorney's office or which is a law firm you could consult with other partners or other associates and kind of go through there but as a judge the ultimate decision rests with you mm -hmm. and although you can run it by your colleagues the ultimate decision rests with you so the isolation is part of it it's, there's social isolation there mm -hmm. um i try to overcome that well with my church um a good group of people we don't talk about law but we just talk about the scriptural things, and, and that's how I get my outlet. Was a very mm -hmm. isolating job. Um, also, the average person doesn't understand that a judge, every judge, tries to do her best to make the right decision for the law, and it's an adversarial system. Mm -hmm. One side is going to lose. And some people take it personal, but you're, you know, you follow the law and make your rulings, and you have to. You have to have the conviction to know mm -hmm. that not everybody's going to like your rulings, but as long as you have based them on the law and the evidence, there's nothing else that you can do as a judge. And there, uh, sometimes um, people do not understand that there are, <laughs> when uh, different laws are broken, but there, there are laws that are in place that you have to abide by, and many times there are also certain minimums and maximums that you have to deal with in terms of meeting out, meeting out that uh, justice as well. Uh, which can sometimes make it difficult. It is, and on the county bench, it's not that, not that much of a problem because, as I said, the maximum you can send a person on the county bench is a year. Mm -hmm. But there's still some minimum mandatory, like in certain DUI offenses, if it's your second, and within a certain time. So it's not as prevalent as on the circuit level. Mm -hmm. But yes, some, we're bound by the law. I noticed, though, in your background that you actually served as an acting circuit judge. Yes. Um, the county court judges are cross assigned by the chief judge, and when he, when when there's coverage that's needed in circuit court, if you're available, you 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 know we're asked to do that. And mm -hmm. I've covered um, circuit court matters in dependency, juvenile issues, um, so and even in criminal cases on the circuit bench, I've done that as well. So mm -hmm. it's not just subject matter. The art of judging is very important. Mm -hmm. You don't get the art of judging after a year or two years. It takes about five years for you to get to the point where you feel comfortable and know, you know how to get around as a judge. So with my experience, the art of judging goes with that as well. Mm -hmm. And we have another issue with all the retirements in the circuit. Yes. We need continuity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it takes, and in any, prof in any profession, you need experienced people, and if you don't have the experience, you need to work on that. So with I've been around Volusia County for 21 years, and this is the highest number of judges that I see retiring in one year, mm -hmm. one, one period of time. So it's important to keep experienced judges in office. And uh, not only the experienced judges, but those that have been found to have great integrity and uh, the experience, uh, but uh, 
also who are, who are seen in the community as uh, being a person uh, of integrity and great character. And, um, you know, I don't, and people say, oh, she sounds like she knows. I don't really, I don't know you that well. My husband knows you very well. He's very supportive of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, just reading information in terms of people that I respect and comments that they have made, um, I feel that I know you in terms of the level of, of integrity and the kind of character that you have, and they speak very highly uh, of you in terms of what these individuals have had to say. Again, people of various uh, walks of life uh, from throughout the county <laughs> who've made the statements in regards to you and the type of person you are, and the fact that they support you and you're continuing as judge and uh, join you in your reelection bid. Uh, closing comments. Um, Again, if you share the website, how they can contact you, those who are willing to um, to support you, and any closing comments you'd like to make at this time. All right. Thanks for having me, Gwen, and it's been an interesting af afternoon. I just want to thank the supporters out there, mm -hmm. and this is me. This is what I do, and whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability, and the Lord will guide me. And I just look forward to your support and your vote on August 26 to continue serving you as your Volusia County Court Judge. I think I've done a more than decent job over the last eight and a half years, and I've, hopefully I've gained your support and vote to continue as your Volusia County Court Judge. Thank you. Okay, and your website again? The website is www.judgemclashin.com. Okay, wonderful, and thank you again for coming. I believe my other, yes, my other candidate is here, so we wish you the best. Thank you, Gwen, as my Edward. Thank did you, sir. Right? Yes, you did. You okay. got mine right. I'm not even going to try yours again. <laughs> Thank you.